and they set up a client king in the land and uh, uh, Herod's father becomes a very important person in that client kingdom and Herod's father marries a Jewish woman and uh, is, in his essence is the power behind the throne uh, of this client state of the Romans. In fact, Herod's father even offers some aid and assistance to the likes of Julius Caesar. So really, yes, points, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's currying mm -hmm. favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was very adept at, at uh, choosing the right side in these uh, wars that were going on yeah. between the Romans and others uh, in, in, well in the Near East. That's what I say. We're going to see that manifest very later. Well. <laughs> but you know, there's another empire that plays a small part in this at the time: the Parthian Empire in what is now I Iran. And in 40 B.C., they overrun all of the the ancient the, the ancient Near East, and they throw out the Romans and install another Hasmonean as king in Jerusalem and Herod escapes this and goes to Rome and curries favor with the Romans and in 37 BC he comes back with the Roman army and retakes the land and out of gratitude the Romans name him king of the Jews in his, 37 BC his mother is Jewish his father is an Edomite and uh, because of his success in the name of the Romans, they reward him uh, with this kingship. And thus we have Herod being the king and a client to the Romans. Now, I think it's important that we emphasize what is his Jewishness here? What is his Jewish background? His because Jewish, that becomes yeah. very important later to our story. Never, the Jews never take to Herod the Great. They always l look at him sort of as a, as a, a, a fake Jew, if you will, because the area from which he comes was forced to convert yeah. Under the to, Maccabees. To Judaism right. under the Maccabees. Yeah, and so people are always suspicious of his commitment to his, his Judaism. So they never do that. And in fact, they look at Herod as nothing more than Romans, Rome's puppet. And so, for all intents and purposes, they regard themselves as under Roman control. And that then leads us to this idea of the messianic expectation is they're looking primarily for the great liberator not just the spiritual right, that, redeemer. Now, now a lot of that has been lost because of the political circumstances well, and, I, I and climate the time, of the, the day. The Maccabean period has become glamorized by right. that time as yes. well. Yeah. It was the time they can say that we had our own people ruling us, and in reality, it became pretty corrupt. It, it was about a hundred-year period, and it, it was fairly corrupt. They they kicked out the the legitimate high priest from the temple and installed one of their own Hasmoneans Who as the, the high priest. Who had the most money, right. too, became he, a big thing. Yeah. And, I, and I think that becomes important for us then to understand what we might call the major sects that we read about in the New Testament that have their roots in this time period Can as well. Can I go back to, sure. to, to the question that brought up this historical discourse, and that is, what kind of a messiah are the Jews then expecting in first century Palestine? And the answer is, the kind of a messiah, the kind of anointed one, that King David and King Solomon were. They were great political leaders. They were great military leaders. And so the Jews in the first century are expecting a kind of a Messiah that will come in, he'll clean up this military political mess, he'll drive the Romans out, uh, he'll allow the Jews to come out from underneath the, the thumb of Rome, and will establish the kind of a Davidic kingdom that we saw back in the Old Testament under King David. Which was the most remarkable that's empire right. in the entire that, ancient that's Near the, East. That's the idyllic past. That, that is the golden age of, of mm -hmm. Israel's history. That's the age to which uh, I think it's fair to say even Jews today look with some longing that we can establish the kind of a Davidic kingdom. And so that's what the Jews are looking for. Now, don't you think though, before we go to this next part of the scribes and the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and all of that that come out of this historical context as well, but wouldn't you say that this political climate of the day clouds the theology as well? Oh, there's no question about it. Yes. That's, the, that's the problem, is that, uh, that all the history impacts their theology, and, and, and they got big problems. Yes. When, when the Hasmoneans take over, they, they uh, accommodate themselves through the course of time to the Hellenistic culture that's and right. the Hellenistic ways, and eventually become uh, Hellenistic in all respects. And the people, though, themselves uh, like the old-time religion. They like the Old Testament. They don't want this, this Hellenism coloring their theology. And they can tell very clearly that what they're teaching is not what That's the right. prophets taught of and, old. And they start a popular movement, a, a conservative, religious, old-time movement that uh, becomes the Pharisees of the New Testament. 
they're the ones who are, who are uh, against the Hellenization that's going on and that's introduced by the Maccabees and, and, uh, or the Hasmoneans. They're the same people. The Hasmoneans themselves, in their accommodations then, become, in, in their Hellenization and their subservience to, these, uh, to Rome and, and to Hellenistic culture, they become the Sadducees of the New Testament. More of an arist aristocratic... Uh, aristocratic status quo, mm -hmm. don't rock the boat, uh, 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 pack right. with the priests, uh, right. a, a, the, a, the liberal, priest a liberalization of the interpretation of the theology of the And the, the Pharisees are going to be the stricter interpretation of it. Yes. And, in, uh, and, and because none of, neither of those two groups are, are, are in the business of freeing the Jews from foreign domination, you get the zealots and other people like that who are politically minded and want to look back to the age of the Maccabees, of the first Maccabees, and, and recreate that with the Romans, that is, throw off the, the Roman ro uh, yoke as the Maccabees had thrown off the Syrian Seleucid uh, yoke 150 years before the time of Christ. So, so I was going to say, then that means in a lot of ways the people are looking at Jesus through political eyes rather than religious eyes. That's exactly the point. And so when they say, when he says, my kingdom is not of this world, that's not the message they want to hear. Right. He's saying, you, you, you're, you're searching for the wrong kind of a Messiah. You've misunderstood the basic nature of, of things. So we can kind of summarize and say, uh, when Alexander the Great came to the ancient Near East and introduced Hellenism, some good things were introduced because people then were were willing to listen to other ideas but bad things were introduced because we get um, the uh, development of the different parties and sects as reactions against or sometimes in favor of this Hellenism then this leads to an apostate form of Israelite religion or an apostate form of Judaism and when the Savior is born into the world uh, a lot of things are messed up with their theology, and they just don't understand. It's the kind a little of bit like the, the, the choices that Joseph Smith has in in 1820. Which church should I join? Yeah. And uh, I don't think he suspected when he went into the woods that the answer would be none of them. And I suspect that there weren't very many people in Christ's day who came up with the answer. None of the things that are available are are the solution to well, the, to and the it, question. And it's reinforced the importance of the written word. And that becomes even more, like especially for the Pharisees, to hold on to, to hang on to. And, and that's one of the good things the Pharisees have. You know, we it right. has it it has its upside and downside. But it, it the Pharisees are not all bad. Uh, we and and yet we need to understand their origin and their roots so that we can understand what Jesus is condemning and, and why, what and why Jesus is espousing. Why that's they right. couldn't accept him when he came. I I think we'll draw this portion of our uh, discussion to a close by saying Jesus was born into the world in the meridian of time. But that meridian dispensation, according to President J. Reuben Clark, was the habitation of some of the most terrible passions that were let loose in world history.